I'm Mike Diamond, Head of Instruction. I'm James Kine, one of the lead instructors here. And we're here to talk to you about some of uh, the questions that we've gotten on our fancy social media platforms. Yeah, so first of all, thank you guys. We asked uh, for you guys to give us some questions. You have asked the questions and uh, I guess kind of talked ourselves into a corner because now we have to answer them. But uh, Do you have the answers? Uh, I have the, uh, the answer guide. You know, the answer that's guide. Pretty much, just so you know, that's always the GMAT instructor's trick is we have the answer guide. That's, that's yeah. it. That's the only difference. It's actually totally not the trick. <laughs> The trick, and, and this is actually a great place to start. Okay. Uh, what materials to use, but I want to talk especially about uh, the, the quality of materials out there. There's a wide variety of materials out there. There are a lot of materials, yeah. but a wide variety of, of quality, I think, is what you're saying. Yeah. A wide variety of quality, but even the good materials in terms of the problems often do a great disservice mm -hmm. to our clients by saying, this is how you do it. Right. You look in the back and you see this, is, it's more apparent with the quantitative. Yeah. Uh, here's all the algebra you need to do. Right. And so many times it's not about the answer, it's about thinking about other solution paths and getting around the answer. Yeah, and this is actually something that happens a lot. I think uh, it's made mainly one of the major pitfalls for self-prep, right? Mm -hmm. Is when you're studying on your own, you read through the official guide or whatever books you may have. Uh, by the way, we recommend always getting the official guide. Uh, other books to supplement are great, but at least the official guide. We have our own materials that we would, uh, we would recommend, obviously. But let's go to the official guide and the answers there. When people are self-prepping, they will go through the official guide, then they'll be reading the official answers, which as Mike just said, they start with, here's the algebra problem and work you all the way through every algebraic step. And I, I don't know if you guys can tell, we haven't rehearsed. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is actually a, a GMAT moment. Yeah, we maybe should have rehearsed. You know, it's uh, failing to plan is planning to fail, I think, is what we say. Yes and no, though, but we have all the answers. We don't need to go over the answers in advance. We don't need a script because we live and breathe the GMAT. This is all we do. And th this, in that way, is a strong parallel for the GMAT. When you're sitting the exam, you don't need to know the answers in advance, A, B, C, D, whatever. If you have the tools, and the knowledge, the experience, the expertise, and then the answers are going to flow. The tools, the knowledge, the experience, the expertise, and all of that I think adds up to what we're talking about, which is also the, the confidence to know yeah. you can go to that test and you can take it. Right Now we may be overconfident here, but it, it's something we're working on. All right? uh, but being confident when you get mm -hmm. to the test is definitely key. And it's often a characteristic of really high achieving test takers. Uh, to be sure, our instructors, none of them went to the test saying, oh, I'm nervous, I'm not going to do well. And when we take follow-up tests from time to time, that's, that's not a question. And that's characteristic of just about everyone I've met, clients, instructors, whatever, mm -hmm. that have scored above that 7, 20, 7, 30 mark. Yeah, I think irrational confidence is probably my best, uh, my best characteristic as a test taker, really. That's your best characteristic overall. Yeah. Thanks, Mike.